What it do, Flight Crew? FTC. Flight Team Stand Up! Why you lie is July. We got Steph Chef look at Curry, man. Bro, a documentary 2022. We got a full Steph movie up in this bit. 30 like Curry. Get your snacks, get your popcorn. Uh, shout out to Trice. Uh, he, he's a pretty cool channel. He makes documentaries on like a lot of like sports players and stuff. Really interesting. I'll leave it down below in the description. Let's check it out. 2022 perfect timing. Just won the final championship. It's probably like a come up story about the like, you know the injury and everything. This been a bro. This is nice, bro. This is happy, makes me smile. Adrian Rojanowski reporting that Kevin Durant is in fact headed to Brooklyn. <laughs> Worst possible news for the Warriors. Clay Thompson has suffered a full this tear his right Achilles. If it's running into the front court, Draymond <laughs> finds him another three. Oh. Got it! 62! <laughs> 62! Steph is doing everything! There is a different energy to this man's game. The Memphis Grizzlies are in the playoffs. They eliminate the Golden State Warriors. Just didn't go our way. Tried to make the most of it. Come back. Follow this up, everybody make the right strides, take advantage of the summer, and you don't want to see us next year. He predicted it too. Two years removed from their loss in the 2019 NBA Finals, the expectations for Stephen Curry and Golden State had changed or at least they had for everyone outside of the newly built Chase Center. You see, there are certain signs that signify the fall of a dynasty, conflict amongst the team's star players, career-changing injuries, the closing of a prime window. In some ways, the Warriors franchise had seen flashes of all three, and now after finishing with the league's worst record in 2020, they had failed to make the playoffs for a second straight season after being bounced from the play-in game by the Grizzlies a year prior. Questions began to arise about whether or not Stephen Curry was capable of once again leading his team to a championship, especially after years of having the luxury of sharing a team with one of the most talented scorers the game has ever seen. After all, how could someone be an all-time great without adding an NBA Finals MVP to their resume? Curry heard all the noise, and he, as well as other members of the franchise in the Bay, knew that the core pieces were still intact, on pace to finally be healthy and able to share the floor together come playoff time. The development of the electric young guard Jordan Poole over the past year, Sir. return of former Finals MVP Andre Iguodala, and the addition of two lottery picks in Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody meant that the Warriors roster was retooled and finally ready to make some noise just in time for the NBA's 75th anniversary season. You know, our coaches remains the same. and Everything that we do on the court and how we play it will be probably pretty similar to years of past. So inspirational in interview right here. You know, how different we are as a team, especially when, you know, when me and Clay are out there and Draymond. From the opening tip of the regular season, you could see there was a familiar <coughs> fire behind these Golden State Warriors. They opened the first 20 games of the season with an 18-2 record, with Curry going off for 28 points per game over the stretch. This included a triple-double in an opening night win over LeBron James' Lakers and a 50-point, 10-assist explosion versus Atlanta that made him the oldest player to ever put up the stat line. Steph had faced his share of criticism since the team's collapse in the 2019 Finals, and coming off one of the best statistical seasons of his career the previous season, was on a mission to prove that he was still playing at a two-time MVP level. It's just incredible to watch Steph. I think his greatness is at the level now where we just expect it. Maybe that's the true measure of greatness when you know, a guy can hit nine or ten threes and you don't even bat an eye because you've seen it before and you know you're gonna see it again. After weeks of buildup, a crowning moment of the regular season, 
and his career came on December 14, 2021. The three-point record has always been something I've looked at and kept track of and understand you know, the longevity that it's required to reach those heights. What Ray Allen has done, stretching the imagination of what it means to shoot the three-pointer and make it a pivotal and important part of your game. I've taken that confidence and run with it. We all talk about, you know, who's the GOAT? And the reality is it's all subjective. But the one thing that isn't subjective when you talk to anyone is who's the greatest shooter ever. There Curry. is no debate. On the cusp of go, history, Green. the Golden State Warriors find themselves in New York City at Madison Square Garden as Steph Curry is now two away from setting the all-time three-point mark. Ray Allen is here with the current record too, holder bro. for most threes in NBA history. Reggie Miller Let's is go. here. All in one Madden year, is just so inspirational, um, man. No athletes have done sort this. Of a celebratory mood here tonight. So man. Have to tie it. There it is. There's nobody that's ever going to pass up this record either. It's like another Will Chamberlain one. And stands on the doorstep of history right now. There's that cross screen again to Wiggins. Steph, three. There it is. NBA three-point history. Stephen Curry stands alone as the most dominant distance shooter nice. the game has ever seen. 2,974 threes Damn. and counting. Oh, guys, nice to say besides, That's I a lot of threes, you guys. And me being who I am on the court, off the court, like this is a, a career milestone because of everybody that I got to suit up with, everybody that set screens for me, everybody that passed me the ball, everybody that believed in the offense and believed in winning in the process. So um, this is truly special, man. To you know, I watched Ray. Right and, uh, he passed Reggie in Boston, and I had this moment. Uh, at the garden, this number right here has been on uh, been on my mind for a long time. So I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it, and uh, and just know that uh, I'm the greatest three point shooter in the, in the history of the league. That's pretty special. So I'm finally ready to say it, baby. Let's go. <laughs> the new year brought some exciting moments for the Warriors. None bigger than the return of Steph's longtime splash brother, Clay Thompson, after being away from the game for 941 days. He went to reach. They cleared down the lane. <laughs> yeah, that beat mud like hero Tyler. Finally having one of the game's great backcourts reunited, the Warriors were able to continue to build chemistry throughout the early months of the year and into the All-Star break. With the NBA's most exciting weekend being held in Curry's birth city of Cleveland, wow. a place where he had him and LeBron are literally related, you guys. Battles, the they were born in the same the hospital. A big performance from the eight-time All Star, and he and then even this year's All Star game was like one of the best in history too. <laughs> Did they go in? Did it go in? Look! Perfectly synced and everything too! To its only fitting, one of the NBA's 75 all-time greats, Steph Curry. See, this trophy has a very special meaning. Uh, honor Kobe, Gigi, everybody who's lost two years ago. So, uh, very humbled, very blessed, and I uh, really appreciate it. Following the buzz around Steph's big night, the Warriors cooled off down the final stretch of the season. Despite the team's championship core still being intact, they were dealing with a crucial injury to their glue guy Draymond Green and experienced the growing pains that come with incorporating so many new pieces into the fold. As Golden State continued trying to build chemistry, on March 16th against the Boston Celtics, they would be hit with another devastating blow. Now the Warriors being kind of defensively. Wow. Marcus Smart saves the possession, but again, Mad on purpose. Look how he rolled on the side. Steph and Marcus are going for the loose ball. Marcus dives, and he goes right into Steph's knee. In order to be healthy come playoff time, Stephen Curry would miss the final 12 games of the regular season. In that was a wild State scare would go too. Five and seven to end the year. Despite the rough ending, the Warriors still managed to finish with a 53 and 29 record, 
good enough for third best in the West. Curry would finish the year with his eighth All-NBA selection, averaging 25 points, six assists, and five rebounds per game, and led the NBA in three-pointers made for the seventh time in his career. Golden State now turned their attention to the postseason, with their trio of Curry, Thompson, and Draymond all finally being set to be active and sharing the floor for the first time since the 2019 Finals. Only this, this is a time, real big three right here, too, to you guys. To Not a stack team at all. This is homegrown. Round this is what makes it so inspirational, though. Up with soon-to-be back-to-back MVP Nikola Jokic and the six-seeded Denver Nuggets. Curry was set to make his return in Game 1, but was regulated to a roll off the bench for the first time in his playoff career, playing with a minutes restriction to air on the side. Me and Curry almost had the same jump first shot, too. Look, career, that's exactly how my wrist flicks. Minutes restriction to air on the side of caution. This Think opened about the it. door for Jordan Poole to make his playoff debut as a starter, in which he'd explode for 30 points in a 123-107 winning game one. It was clear the Nuggets just didn't have the firepower to hang with the high-scoring offensive attack. No, sir. As the Warriors began experimenting with a deadly small ball lineup that included Curry, Poole, Clay, first-time All-Star Andrew Wiggins, and Draymond Green at the five. The fast-paced scoring would lead to Steph dropping 34 points in 22 Sheesh. minutes off the bench in a game two win. And Bro, off the bench the is crazy. Lineup, Golden State would complete the gentleman's sweep, winning the series four to one. Round two would be Golden State's greatest challenge. It's crazy because random. Honestly, nobody would ever obviously do this. Why? But like, if you think about it, like if coaches like throughout the regular season were to like trick people, you know what I'm saying, and be like, okay, like this random game, you know what I'm saying. We know it's gonna be nationally televised. They're expecting LeBron to start. He got no injuries or whatever. You know what I'm saying. Um, and he ends up not starting, and he comes off the bench. So, which means when you come off the bench, usually your rotation in a lineup, you know what I'm saying, and you don't even announce it at all. You know, you say at the like, last second, you're going to come in when the other bench players are going to come in. So, that means that you can, like, literally, like, they have a chance to play against weaker competition. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, hey, if the coaches start doing that in the future, just know they got it from me. You know what I'm saying? Just know they got it from me. Because it's almost like it's like it's like basketball at the same at the end of the day is also like chess and checkers. You know what I'm saying? You don't ever want to give your next move out. And sometimes like like I said, like why in the heck would you not want to start a superstar? Like nobody's gonna probably do that. But if they do, they got it from me. As they it's literally like chess and checkers. You never know what the left well move. Following their elimination the previous year, the young Memphis Grizzlies had been on a tear during the regular season, earning the two seed after riding the momentum of rising star John Morant matchup nightmare Jaron Jackson Jr., and a group of gritty role players. This would be the first playoff series that the Warriors didn't have home court advantage since the 2018 Western Conference Finals against Houston. But Golden State would enter game one with revenge on their minds. When he's going to take it personal, they're going to defend him with a small perimeter gun. Oh, Gary Payton with the flush. Goes for yeah. the They would complete a 117-116 oh. win in Memphis, led by a 31-point performance by Jordan Poole oh, on the bench. Man. Curry and Morant Deserve had contract for offseason. points, going back and forth in a contest that showcased a battle of the present and future at the point guard position. Despite taking the loss, Ja, who had been a force all season long, gave the Warriors a front row seat to his growing greatness in Game 2. Nah, that move was wild. I'm doing that in the future IRL, yeah. It's a tough feeling, um, but we understand the big picture. You know, we came, got one, take care of our home court on, on Saturday. You have to learn the lessons you need to learn. We know we're ready for it. And we're ready to bounce back and get ready for, for the game on uh, Saturday. Golden State had still been able to steal home court advantage for the series. And in game three, showcased exactly why they still belonged at the top of the Western Conference.
Golden State would pull off a convincing 30 point win with Curry dropping 30 along with a combined 48 points from Klay Thompson and Jordan Poole. That's An right. An injury to Morant in the fourth quarter uh, would all but see seal that. the fate of the Grizzlies for the rest of the series as Golden State would win two of the next three, including 34 and 29 point daggers from Stephen to send Memphis home in six. We can continue to build on this as we look forward to the next round, no matter who we play. So not lost in this journey is the fact that we're still trying to peak at the right time. So you can say it's an exciting time to get past this series and, and look forward to what's coming next. Golden State's matchup in the conference finals would be an unexpected Donna, but dude. deserving opponent as the fourth seeded Dallas Mavericks Somebody's would shock everyone, Witty. beating the defending Western champs and number one seed Phoenix Suns in seven games the previous round. Luka Doncic had already proven to be one of the game's elite players and now was looking to add a trip to the NBA finals on his already growing list of accolades. The nice. Warriors came out firing from the opening tip in game one, handing the Mavericks a loss in back-to-back -back games in the Chase Center to <laughs> open the series. But it was game three, the first game in Dallas, that Stephen Curry would demonstrate the level of play that separates champions from the rest. So inspirational. Curry takes a handoff, accelerates front court, gets all the way inside hand, up and good, and a foul. Curry left corner with the shot, it's up and splash! Warriors they just took that the too smooth. They forgot the auto tune. Three, Steph got it. Oh, what a shot! Man, amazing he fan base, man. Ruthless. Outside, Curry at three, bullseye. Was that just Jimmy to you or for me? To you. Okay. To you. The Mavericks would respond with a win of their own in Game Four. But similar to round one, Golden State would answer with a 10 point win to eliminate Dallas in five. Stephen Curry's performance earned him the inaugural Magic Johnson Western Conference Finals MVP award. The first elusive postseason MVP trophy of his career. This is a blessing, obviously as a team member to get back here with Draymond set for us to be out the mix for the last two years and to be where we belong back in the finals. Uh, this is special, our fan base, to do it in this new building. This isn't the ultimate goal, but we gotta celebrate this because all we went through these last three years, so. Earning a sixth finals appearance in eight years, the first led solely by Curry since 2016, there was a legacy on the line in the 2022 NBA Finals, and Stefan was ready to respond. Solid hardware, baby. Going back to the ship where we call for the wins. Hey. 58 years. Sheesh. That's how long it had been since Wilt Chamberlain's Philadelphia Warriors met Wilt. Bill Russell's Boston Celtics in the night. Philadelphia Warriors is crazy. A lot has changed about the So they was in Philadelphia, but their jerseys were San but it was Francisco. Only fitting for two of the NBA historic teams to match up in the championship series of the league's 75th anniversary. The Boston Celtics had quite possibly the most difficult road to the finals in recent memory, having to go through the Kevin Durant-led Brooklyn Nets in round one, the defending NBA champion Bucks in round two, and the number one seed Miami Heat in the Eastern they Conference. They did, finals. you gotta get the seeds some Following credit. a first team all NBA selection. I feel like they got burnt out by the finals goal. though, young Jason team. Jason Tatum had emerged as a top player in the league over the course of the playoffs winning the first ever Eastern Conference Finals MVP. He, along with fellow All-Star Jalen Brown and Defensive Player of the Year Marcus Smart, made the Celtics a dangerous opponent for Curry and the Warriors on the game's biggest stage. I got the sense from you last summer that you believed you could be here then. What was it that you saw or believed that made you feel like the, the team you had could be here? You could feel like we were close, close to being in that conversation where you're a serious contender to come out of, you know, out of the West yeah. coming into this year. Like I still was surprised by our start, like I said, but that was the gas in the tank for the whole summer and for the start of this year, knowing that we were going to be uh, a problem this year. And we got four more wins to, to make it all worth it, but it's a good feeling. One has been the NBA's golden standard for a decade. The other is the game's original monarchy. They will make the next chapter of NBA history together.
Game 1 saw the Warriors get off to a hot start, with Steph and Curry playing at a level that the game hadn't seen in over two decades. Curry's historic 21 point first quarter was the most scored in a single quarter of a finals game since Michael Jordan in 1993. Sheesh. But the resilient Celtics stayed close throughout the second quarter and found themselves with the lead as the two teams headed into halftime. The third quarter had belonged to the Warriors all postseason long, and this night would be no different as Golden State would win the quarter 38-24 to take a 12-point lead. However, it was Boston, who had been resilient all season long, that went on a historic run in the fourth to shock the basketball world. Bro, all those threes pissed me off. Bro, it was so funny. It was people telling there was people hitting me up talking about the season, about the sweep the Warriors and all this, man. And then I had that one better line when I was on stream that one night. And I had said that if the C's uh, sweep the Warriors, um, I have to come in here. So like game two, I was, I remember this, I was so nervous. Bro. I was like, oh. There we go, I said I have to go ball. And they did it. Stealing home was a little advantage scared for 24 and hours. putting the pressure on Golden State for a must-win game two. It's not ideal, but um, it was really crazy believe. because game two that probably was the most important game two of not only just finals history, just sports playoffs history, let alone because if you're going to talk about not even just skill necessarily, momentum is a thing, and it's just like. If we would have laid like been down 2-0, especially with the way things in social media is nowadays, bro, I think the Warriors honestly like they could have still, I feel like, and I strongly believe like they would have been able to come back from that and still won the NBA championship. But they feel I feel like they would have been a strong, like, um, you know what I'm saying, opportunity for them to lose because of, you know, they, they would have just got absolutely bashed on social, you know what I'm saying? Like the games, you gotta think about, it, they're like two to three, sometimes four days apart. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you, you, what are you going to do? You just sit there and read the newspaper. Like, you practice for about four to five hours. you got to go home. you got to eat. you got to, you know what I'm saying, do the regular day-to-day. -day. So you can't not miss it. So I feel like that would have really, they would have been mentally just, like, messed up. You know what I'm saying? Continuing on. Like, it was interesting. That, and I feel like there needs to be, like, a real, you know what I'm saying, study um, of that uh, specific game two and what they were facing. Maybe my man Trice... He's going to sit there and talk about it. Uh, but it all year. I've been man. in the playoffs after a loss, so learned a lot from that fourth quarter. Obviously, they made a lot of shots. We know they're a good team, so are we. We got to respond on, on Sunday. After failing to capitalize on a 34-point statement from Curry to open the series and facing the possibility of traveling to Boston down 0-2, the Warriors were fully aware of the stakes involved with Game 2 and adjusted their game plan accordingly. Determined to slow down the Celtics role players hot shooting, Golden State's defensive intensity was noticeably high. No one more so than the former MVP himself. Stephen Curry would have one of the most impressive defensive performances of his Strong. career, holding his own in ISO situations and coming up with three steals over man. the course of the night. This on man, Curry's honestly the best defensive point, point guard in history, too. Scoring 29 points if he really puts his energy and wants to help bury the Celtics man, 107 he's more of a lockdown than while getting the win relieved from Ron Ortez, bro. Didn't completely I think Ron Ortez is like, not, now he, he's and second they now. Curry's passing up defensively. You know, and like the, the Rodmans and stuff and the Lambeers. We knew that. Claw our way back into the series, give us some life, and now we get to uh, take the show on the road and try to go win one in Boston. We have to, so it's a good night. As expected, the Celtics were ready to defend TD Garden in Game 3, with Tatum, Brown, and Smart all combining for 77 points to help Boston go up 2-1. Curry had come up with another big night dropping 31 points and playing a big part in another large third quarter for Golden State, 
but foul trouble had led to an extended stay on the bench early in the fourth quarter, allowing the Celtics to pull away late. The situation is what it is. We're on the road, must-win game, game four. We had a must-win game after you know, a tough, tough one in game one, and we got game two, so the flow, we still feel like we obviously can win the series, and we gotta come out with the right inten intensity and focus in game four. He's been so much for our team, the whole Bay Area. He's the reason when things were bad that we still felt like we just gotta keep working, we're gonna figure out because we still have to turn. Game four was once again seen by the Warriors as a must win. Either they steal back home court with the man, momentum so back Looney to the Bay, this, man. He literally, or they find themselves every faced game with the notoriously difficult 3-1 deficit that has ended the championship hopes of many contenders. Boston's Garden was rocking from the opening tip, with everyone in the building knowing how pivotal the result would be for the rest of the series. Jason Tatum and the Celtics started the game strong, answering the Warriors offense shot for shot in a close first quarter. However, it was Stephen Curry, normally known for his quiet demeanor, who had heard the talk from Boston fans in Game 3, wow. and was determined to let them and the world know that this was his moment. <laughs> he owes the Celtics, and then he roasted him on stage. Got some contact Got one. Steph Curry felt the bump, Brown picks up his third, got a chance for a three-point play. The Celtics had still managed to go on a run in the second quarter, following the lead of their two all-star wings on the way to a six-point halftime lead. But from the moment the team stepped onto the parquet floor for the second half, it was Curry who would elevate his game to legendary status. Curry launches a three. It's good. Curry. It's good. Boston would try to stay within striking distance like they had in game one, but every time they would get close, it seemed like Steph had an answer, finding ways to score and letting the crowd know exactly what they were witnessing. As the final buzzer sounded, Curry had put on an all-time great performance, finishing with 43 points and 10 rebounds to tie the series headed back to the West Coast. I know you won't say it, but we can. It looks like you are really just putting these guys on your back right now. I know your foot's not right. How are you doing it? Been here six times. You've got a lot of experience in terms of just staying composed, confident of what you can do. Uh, the endurance to be able to fight through the foot and just play my game for you know however many minutes I'm out there. Uh, but to win on the road and Get home court advantage back. Big, big for this group. Special shout out Steph Curry, man. What a what a performance. My goodness. This guy is the, one of the greatest to ever run that point position. My no, goodness. he is the greatest, Clay. Come My on, Clay. Necessary, baby. Lowercase w man serious. still. As the first player in NBA Finals history to record a 40 point, 10 rebound, and seven threes made stat line, Steph's game four did more than just make a statement in the arena. It sent out a message to every fan, critic, and purist the game has to offer. Stephen Curry was not just capable of performing in the NBA Finals. He was out to prove that he's one of the best performers the game's biggest stage has ever seen. Even though the Celtics hadn't lost back-to-back -back games at any point in the postseason, the odds seemed to be swinging in the Warriors' favor as the series shifted back to Chase Center for Game 5. Wow. The confidence from their previous <laughs> win clearly leaked over early on, with Golden State jumping out to a 24-8 lead with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Boston had made a name for themselves all season long with their ability to claw back into games, and despite the early deficit, would put together a huge second and third quarter to only trail by one heading into the fourth. Stephen Curry had struggled from beyond the arc my mouse. Made, and would eventually fail to hit a single three for the first time in his postseason career. Oh, that's but wild. But the attention the Celtics three. paid to him would open up opportunities And how many bad games did he have in his career? Like teams. one, two? No warrior saw this impact as much as Andrew Wiggins, who after having a big performance in game four, followed up with his best game of the postseason, 
scoring 26 points and continuing his elite defense down the stretch to help Golden State pull off a 104-94 win. The Warriors were now one win away from once again writing their name in history books. Yeah! One more. One more. This is the moment for Steph to define and, and show everybody I can carry a team to the, to the top of the mountain and win a championship on my back. I think they smell blood. I think that Steph Curry, I have a very hard time imagining he's going to even come close to duplicating his performance from game five. I think he's going to come there in Boston and play lights out for the second game in a row. On June 16th, 2022, the Golden State Warriors would step on the floor in Boston with the hopes of ending their season via an elimination game six. There was a heightened sense of urgency for the Celtics, who after overcoming two seven game series already in these playoffs, were fully prepared to stretch this series to its limit. The home team would come out firing, pulling ahead 12 to two early on in an attempt to shake the confidence of the Warriors. However, like champions do, Golden State would respond accordingly, and it would come in the form of a historic run unlike anything seen in the finals in the past 50 years. The Warriors' 21-0 run forced the Celtics wow. to play from behind the remainder of the contest. And although they would eat into the deficit slightly in the third quarter, it was Stephen Curry who would fittingly shut the door on Boston's championship hopes. Curry sidestep, wide open three, got it. It's Curry, Steph Curry from downtown. Curry on three, it's Curry. Damn. No, it's amazing. You can't see the net moves, yo. Behind Curry's 34 points, 22 of which came in the second half, Golden State had achieved what seemed to be impossible early in the series, defeating Boston in three straight games and once again earning himself basketball's ultimate prize. The emotions just pouring out. It might be his fourth, but it means so much. That's what I'm saying. I feel like this was probably his, the best ring. This is crazy, man. Inspirational. The Dubs dynasty is still very much alive. Congratulations. You are the 2022 NBA champion. Yeah. And for the first time ever, he's an NBA Finals MVP. The 2022 Bill Russell NBA Finals MVP award goes to Stephen Curry. Yeah. I'm happy for everybody, but I'm thrilled for Steph. To me, this is his crowning achievement in what, what's already been an incredible career. So inspirational. After averaging 31.2 points, six rebounds, and five assists in the 2022 NBA Finals, Stephen Curry had become the first player in league history to average that stat line in the Finals with over five threes made per game. He had joined the legendary company of Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Jerry West as the only people to average such a stat line in multiple finals and became only the third player under 6'3 to win a finals MVP trophy. But most importantly, Stephen Curry had once and for all proven where he belongs in the history of the game. You can talk forever about how he changed the game with his shooting touch or how he's easily the greatest three-point threat the NBA has ever seen. But now there is no more denying that he also belongs in the conversation of the game's all-time greats. After nearly three years of struggles and doubts, Curry had put the Warriors on his back when it mattered most and carried them to a championship with one of the most memorable finals performances in recent memory. They had said he'd never make it back. They had said he couldn't perform when it mattered most. They had said he needed a finals MVP to validate his legacy. But what are they gonna say now? Yeah, man, this is just absolutely inspirational, man. 
What are they gonna say now? Shout out to Trice, man. This is an amazing documentary. As usual, man. Tell me about that stretch next, man. 